Uh, so we have 0.01 molar ammonium. Here's the KB. Uh, let's say that it's in 0.5 liters of solution. And now we want to find the pH. Let's make a couple of uh, points here. So I think one of you wrote this equation without the water. Um, but in this case, we need someone for the ammonia to uh, react with. What does a, so the ammonia here is a base, and bases take protons. Well, the base has to have someone to take the proton from. So it has to take it from the water. You might have been thinking of sodium hydroxide, but that's a strong base. Um, strong bases, uh, like sodium hydroxide, we don't need water for them to react with because they just dissociate into hydroxide. But a weak base like this is going to take a proton and it needs someone to take the proton from. Also, it's um, technical, you should put a plus on the ammonium because after it takes the proton, it's NH4+, plus, not just NH3. Where did you get this number from? So uh, let's see. So I think you both saw that we had to calculate the concentration. So that would be 0.01 divided by 0.5, but 0.01 divided by 0.5, I'm getting 0.02 for not that, not just 0.2. Um, I, oh, I, I oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. So that should be 0.02 molar. 0.01 divided by 0.5. Whoops. What did you get as your answer? Uh, 10.7. 7.3. Oh, two different answers? Okay. I took the negative log with the OH minus, <clears throat> and I got that, because I was concentrating on my problem. And then um, the PO, the pH of that, and I subtracted. <coughs> uh. Oh, I see. Uh, my bad. I think this is wrong. Yeah. 
boy, your calculator is hard to see. <laughs> it's really hard to see. Um, I haven't seen this calculator before. It's what? 0. 0.0004. Uh, I guess that's right. Okay, so far so good. And then it's the power of. Yeah, I just typed it wrong. Okay. I didn't good. get that first, so that's why. Okay. Which case is this? Weak base. Weak base. All right, so in the handout, you should put down that the way that we figured out a weak base is in this place in your notes. Good. Okay. Um, you might want to make a note that we, um, we have to put in water again. The one case where we don't put in water is the strong base by itself. Um, so what is the KB? KB is just a special name for the equilibrium constant for a base ionization reaction, just like KA. So if you didn't know this was a base, this would be the clue that they gave you the KB, perhaps. Um, here's a technicality we haven't talked about. Didn't we already learn that water also provides hydroxides? Water provides 10 to the negative 7 hydroxides. So why are we only paying attention to the hydroxides from the base? Well, because water is such a weak base that usually the amount of hydroxides from the water is swamped by the hydroxide from the base. So usually in an introductory class like this, you would ignore the, the hydroxides and the hydroniums from the water because that's um, minuscule compared to the base. Uh, that was the case here. The hydroxide would uh, be providing less than 10 to the negative 7. Um, the, the water would be providing less than 10 to the negative 7 hydroxides. But the base is providing about 10 to the negative 4 hydroxides, which is like a thousand times more. So this, uh, we can ignore that, uh, that from the water. You made the normal approximation. To avoid using the quadratic formula, you said that 0.02 minus x is just 0.02. You can see here that x really is a lot smaller than 0.02. It's like 100 times smaller. So that's a safe approximation. I have a question. Yeah. Sometimes before we start these problems, because it goes um, to equilibrium, doesn't it? Shouldn't we solve for Q to make sure that I put like that to do minus x plus x plus x? Because can't we get examples where it's going to go that way and then we're going to have to do plus x and then minus x on that side? I don't know if I followed that. Are you saying that um, it might go back, it might be going like, both forward and reverse? Or? Yeah. Now, it's true that um, we're going to have both forward and reverse reactions happening here, but the equilibrium will be when the forward reaction is canceling the reverse reaction. So we're not saying, we never said the reaction goes all the way to completion. We said that the net reaction is going to go forward by an amount x and then stop. Um, why does it stop at, at x? Because at that point, the reverse reaction is canceling the forward reaction. So we really are taking the reverse reaction into account. Um, the reason why for the assigns here is when we really started, there really was no hydroxide and no hydronium. So, um, so uh, the net reaction can only go forward. The net reaction can only go forward. It's true that once of this has been, some of this has been produced, it, the reaction starts going backwards as well. But that's already taken into account here. Notice that we did use Q equals K. We did use the equilibrium approach here. So this really does tell us the equilibrium. Um, the only time we have to do what you said is, suppose that we started by assuming that all 0.02 molar of this got made into 0.02 molar hydroxides. Well, then we'd have to take the reaction backwards, back towards equilibrium, to see where the true equilibrium was. Um, but it's much simpler just to do this, and just okay. to go to equilibrium in the first place. Okay, it's kind of a subtle issue. Uh, and it was good that you saw that the answer wasn't 3.22, but 14 minus 3.22, which is 10.78. Okay, which we expect this is a basic solution. 